Intermittent fasting for men is a little bit different, and we need to pay attention to those idiosyncrasies because that could be the difference between having success with intermittent fasting or feeling like you're just banging your head against the wall. All right, we have to pay attention to human growth hormone. We have to pay attention to testosterone. We have to pay attention to muscle mass, all of which are things that are very easy to corral and control if we know how the body works. So let's go ahead and dive in. The big picture is when you look at what fasting is, well, yeah, you are putting yourself in a stressful situation. And in any kind of starvation or stressful situation, it would make sense that your body would sort of resort to, well, very primal things. And our bodies are really designed to preserve a lot of the energy when we're fasting for the brain. So it makes sense that libido and sex drive might go down a little bit. But we don't have to just rely on sort of evolutionary hypothesis. We can look at some hard data. So there's one study that was published in the Journal of Translational Medicine. It took a look at 34 resistance trained men and had them intermittent fast for eight weeks. Okay, so during these eight weeks, they only ate during uh, the periods of 1 p.m., 4 p.m., and 8 p.m. Here's what's wild. Their muscle mass stayed the same. Their strength also stayed the same and their performance stayed the same, yet their anabolic hormones dropped. They had a drop in insulin, which is no surprise. They had a drop in their insulin-like growth factor, insulin growth-like factor, but they also had a drop in testosterone, a pretty significant drop in testosterone, yet they didn't really lose muscle. So does this mean that you should immediately stop intermittent fasting because your testosterone levels might drop? Not quite, because we have to remember one big thing. When you lose body fat, your testosterone levels will go up. Okay, so if you're starting out and you look at these studies and you say, oh my gosh, testosterone levels are gonna drop a little bit. Well, first of all, who cares if your testosterone levels drop a little bit if you're still maintaining muscle and it's not really affecting your lifestyle. Pay attention to your lifestyle, not the number. Okay, but secondly, as you drop body fat, you're gonna have less fat that aromatizes, which means turns testosterone into estrogen. So you don't wanna like bite your nose to spite your face. So anyway, I'll break this video down into kind of different things and strategies that you can implement. So first thing that you should implement based upon what I'm saying here is add zinc to your fasting regimen. Okay, a lot of studies demonstrate that when people fast or when they go through Ramadan, for instance, their testosterone levels drop. But there are lots of other studies that demonstrate that it's more about the receptor and the receptor cell and how it receives androgens, how it receives testosterone. In other words, your testosterone levels can be low but if you're actually receiving it at the cellular level, that's all that matters. And you know what improves the affinity for an androgen receptor and its agonist? Zinc, that's right. So just taking in like 25 milligrams of zinc during your fasting period can help potentially negate some of those lower testosterone effects that you might have during a fast. So the previous study that I talked about talked about muscle mass being preserved. Well, that probably has to do with intermittent fasting and human growth hormone. Now, it's not like what people kind of put out there on the internet. Like human growth hormone doesn't like magically increase through the roof. But what happens is human growth hormone increases during the period of your fast in an effort to preserve muscle. However, if you are overweight, that attenuates your growth hormone spikes. So you're not getting as much benefit. In fact, if you look at some of the research, you see that people that are overweight or obese, when they intermittent fast, they lose more muscle than lean people do when they fast. Wow, that's kind of wild. You would think, hey, I have more to burn, so it's gonna burn through the fat first. But nope, it's blunting the human growth hormone. So what should men do in this particular case? Well, there's some interesting research here. There was a study that was published in the Journal of Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise that looked at a supplement called GABA, G-A-B-A, gamma aminobutyric acid. And just three grams of GABA taken prior to a workout, four x growth hormone levels after the workout. So that means taking in three grams, which will not break a fast, by the way, prior to your workout can help you get more of a growth hormone response after your workout, thereby enhancing your intermittent fasting regime. But the study also found that growth hormone levels were mildly elevated outside of working out. So just by taking in some GABA during your intermittent fasting period, you could be supporting those human growth hormone levels. Now, here's something very important though. Now, this kind of ties in with what I was talking about. It is extra important for men to try, 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 try to have your eating period end at like 4 p.m. Try not to eat at night. In fact, what I'd recommend men do is break your fast in the morning. 
So skip your dinners and break your fast in the morning. Why is this extra important for men? Well, a couple of different reasons. For one, we do not want a bunch of food coming in at night. That is bad for our circadian rhythm, it's bad for the environmental cues in our metabolism, but in the spirit of human growth hormone, if we spike our insulin by having a bunch of food in the evening time, insulin blunts growth hormone, and growth hormone has its biggest natural spikes at night. So whenever we have insulin coming in at night, we are attenuating that growth hormone response at night. So it's very important that we do what we can to either A, not eat at night and have your fasting period go through dinner, break your fast in the morning, and then eat food until 2, 3, 4 p.m. and then fast again or whatever. Or if you cannot do that, do everything in your power to have the last meal of the day or any meals after 4 p.m. be low carb or even ketogenic so that you're not having an insulin spike that gets in the way of growth hormone. This is one of the biggest perks of keeping low carb anyway, is that you can actually allow your growth hormone levels to not be blunted by insulin. I know it's hard to skip dinner sometimes, but it makes a very big difference. So now I wanna go through sort of a list of things that men should be paying attention to and different kinds of foods that men might wanna add into their diet. By the way, some of the foods that I'm gonna talk about, things like seaweed and things like that that are really good for the thyroid and for iodine levels, you can get through Thrive Market. There's a link down below in the description that has a lot of the foods that I'm gonna talk about, but a lot of the foods I talk about in various videos as well. Thrive is an online membership-based grocery store. So your groceries get delivered right to your doorstep, which is super convenient, but in the spirit of this video, I have my very specific keto, and my very specific fasting bundles through Thrive Market. So if you just use that link that's down below in the description, you can check them out. They're a big supporter of this channel. They are very economical for the end user, so I highly recommend it. Check them out after this video down below. It's called Thrive Market, and there's a special link that gets you a free gift when you use it through that link. Okay, men couple things that you need to pay attention to. The more muscle that you have, even if you're not just like this ungodly bodybuilder, the more muscle that you have, the more cellular signaling you have. Muscle is a secretary organ. It secretes myokines. It secretes signals to the brain that allow you to be leaner. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to improve protein synthesis since you're going to be condensing your meals a little bit more. One of the hacks that I've figured out is adding essential amino acids with every time you consume protein. You don't have to do it all the time. Don't make it like a religion, but by and large, if you're at home and you have it conveniently handy, add a scoop of amino acids, essential amino acids, every time you consume protein or a meal. What it does is it increases the bioavailability of the protein and studies have demonstrated that it can two to four X your protein synthesis, meaning you're going to get more bang for the buck from the protein that you're actually consuming. So I would definitely do that. Additionally, men, you wanna do what you can to work out in the morning, okay? Especially on a fasting day. Do your resistance training in a fasted state in the morning, okay? And then break your fast after your workout. Why would you do this? Well, two reasons, okay? One, it allows you to get a massive insulin spike and a lot more protein synthesis at the end of your workout. Because think of this, you're working out, which means you're already becoming very insulin sensitive and receptive to the food that you eat. You all remember the old magazines where it would say, hey, eat this after your workout because that's the anabolic window when you're gonna build muscle. So you definitely have that anabolic window working for you, but you also have the end of a fast working for you, which means that your body's gonna suck up whatever you take in. Okay, so have those essential amino acids along with your protein post-workout at the end of a fast, breaking your fast post-workout. It's huge. Another reason you wanna do this though is because your testosterone levels are higher in the morning. We wanna grab every little iota that we can of testosterone to use it to our advantage, especially if we are cautious of the fact that testosterone levels may in the short term decline a little bit. So just be cognizant of that. The other one that we talked about is zinc throughout your fasting period. 25 milligrams is all you need. And on a non-fasting day, you would have that zinc before bed. It just works a little bit better that way. Also has some effect with growth hormone too. So you definitely wanna be paying attention to that. Additionally, as we talked about, adding GABA into the mix. Okay, GABA during your fast, but also on the days you don't fast, take three grams as well because you also get that continued growth hormone response. But what about scheduling? Like, should you be fasting every day for men? What should you do? What I would recommend is fast every other day. Okay, it's just easy math to remember. You don't wanna fast every day because you're just going to slowly decrease your metabolism. And that's not exactly good for muscle, not exactly good for libido, testosterone, growth hormone, any of that stuff. So if you fast every other day, it just works in your favor. Now here's what I would recommend that you do. On the days that you are fasting, 
feel free to have some carbohydrates. Feel free to have carbs on that day. Why? Because your eating window is pretty compressed and any insulin spike that you get from carbohydrates is gonna be in a pretty compressed window. So I'm not as worried about it. You don't have to do this, by the way. If you don't like to eat carbohydrates or you're following keto or whatever, by all means, you don't have to have the carbs. But if you are someone that eats carbs, then this would be the day to do it. On the days that you fast, when you do break your fast, that's when you go ahead and allow yourself to have some carbohydrates. It's actually good for a lot of different things in that category. But on the other days, the alternate day that you're not fasting, so fasting day, non-fasting day, fasting day, non-fasting day. On the non-fasting days, try to get yourself ketogenic. Why would I say this? Not because I'm a keto evangelist, but because I feel like if you are putting yourself in a spot where you are lower carbohydrate on those days, it allows you to preserve more muscle when you go into your next fasting day because your ketone levels will be a little bit higher, but you're also going to have a lower level of insulin, which is not going to get in the way of growth hormone. Think of it like this. Your fasting days, your growth hormone is already elevated a little bit. Then you have a non-fasting day, so your growth hormone would be down a little bit because you're not fasting. But if you cannot have insulin spikes because you're eating low carb, you at least get that growth hormone a little bit further up. So we do want to be doing what we can to get those growth hormone levels a little bit higher. Okay. Then I want you to be consuming adaptogenic foods and really good trace mineral rich foods that are supporting the thyroid. So try to get things like lion's mane into the mix whenever you can. Okay, Lion's mane is an adaptogenic mushroom. So I love adding that into my coffee. I love adding it whenever I can. Why? Because it's all about homeostasis. So I would recommend lion's mane, ashwagandha, rhodiola, any of those things that you can add in, just find beverages with them, add them in in supplement form, whatever. I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of that right now, but it's going to help stabilize and just like it's supposed to do, bring you back to homeostasis. So that way your body isn't constantly feeling this crazy shock that could affect your libido. It's actually allowing your body to find a middle ground as far as your, your hormones and your endocrine system is concerned. So it's a very important thing. But then coupled in with that, I usually recommend this for women on a normal day, but when it comes down to men and you're talking about just overall intermittent fasting, I do think that having some kind of seaweed snack or something like that is really important because it's one of the best ways to get that iodine in. I'm not a fan of iodized salt because it's devoid of all the minerals, but if you add some seaweed into the mix, which sounds kind of gnarly, but it's actually pretty good, it does help you out with that iodine, which is critical for thyroid function. As we reduce our carbohydrate intake or if we reduce our calorie intake in general, eventually our thyroid levels start to come down. You see it in people that are dieting a lot. And the thyroid is regulating the metabolism. But the thyroid hormone needs iodine to ultimately create thyroid hormone. Without iodine, it cannot create T3. It cannot convert T4 to T3. Very, very important there. Okay, so adding seaweed in gets you enough of that iodine. So I know it sounds crazy, but on the days that you're fasting, during your eating window, try to get like one packet of seaweed snacks in there. You don't have to do it on your actual eating days. It just will help you out a ton. And then I've already talked about the zinc. The zinc is going to improve the affinity of the receptor for the thyroid to get to the cell too. So again, pay attention to the thyroid because that regulates a lot. This next tip might be a little bit more like first class if you have one handy because I know now in the way that the world is it's a little bit hard to find a sauna that is open but saunas improve human growth hormone levels tremendously okay there are some Finnish studies that have seen that okay when people sit in a high heat sauna a few times per week for 30 to 60 minutes they can have huge like 5 to 10x boosts in their growth hormone levels so if you sit in a sauna after a workout you can ride that additional growth hormone surge again you see the common theme here i'm trying to do what we can to capitalize on those growth hormone levels being a little bit elevated getting you the most out of your intermittent fasting so you can be an optimized male and feel the way that you want to feel now i need to jump over to sort of the health side for a second okay something that once you get north of 40 you pay attention to is your prostate Okay, whether it's tumors, whether it's just enlarged, whatever. Well, studies have demonstrated that insulin seems to play a large correlating role with prostate issues. Well, how do we kind of control that? Well, intermittent fasting is a great way. So already we're talking like something that's good for the prostate in a lot of ways. Because when you look at the Journal of Translational Medicine, there was a study that found there was a 20 to 30% reduction in insulin overall in people that practice intermittent fasting. That's a potential 20 to 30% reduction of insulin that could be impacting the prostate. So that's all really good there, right? So cool. But what's something that you can take that might help you out with that even more? Saw palmetto, which you've probably heard of. Saw palmetto is a supplement that's widely known for its help with prostate issues. Well, you're going to get an increased impact from it during your eating window just because you've been fasting. So I highly recommend that you add that into the mix. 
Now let's jump into how you should orient your workouts for just a moment so you get a little bit more out of this. Okay, you should orient your workouts so that your resistance training, your weight training is on your fasting days. Doesn't that sound crazy? Wouldn't you think you'd wanna like resistance train on the days you're not fasting, like when you're actually eating? No, because you're going to be breaking your fast after your workout. But also, resistance training is going to increase testosterone. It's going to boost that growth hormone already. So you're getting that double whammy effect. I don't want you doing a bunch of cardio. I mean, you can, but I would rather you get your resistance training. And then I would rather you do your cardio on your fed days, but do it in a fasted state. So before you start eating for the day, do some cardio. It just makes more sense. Resistance train on fasting days, cardio on non-fasting days. And it ends up with a nice little balance that we can really get a lot out of there. Now we need to talk about breaking the fast for a moment. How should men specifically break a fast? You know, men and women really should be breaking a fast ultimately about the same way. But I have to make sure that I include it in this video so it's all encompassing and you're not left hanging. I generally would recommend that you have some kind of easy digesting protein, something that's rich in thiamine, something that's not hard to mechanically digest. I would usually recommend like a lean chicken breast, a lean ground turkey, a lean ground chicken. Try to keep away from the beef for a little bit later in the day, just so that you're getting easy to digest stuff. An ideal kind of protein would be like a lean white fish, but that's not exactly ideal, right? It's, it's not like, you don't, I don't carry Dover sole in my backpack anymore. People made fun of me a lot. So now I just usually do like some kind of easy to digest protein powder, pea protein powder, something like that. In the recent months, barring the research that's come out surrounding essential amino acids, I'll take one to one and a half scoops of pea protein and I'll add some essential amino acids to increase the bioavailability of the protein and get that 4X protein synthesis that I'm after. Okay, that's it. Maybe I'll have some bone broth, maybe I'll have a little bit of a seaweed snack with that breakfast meal, but I keep it super, 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 super easy. And then like 60 minutes later, I have a larger, more voluptuous meal that gets me more of my micronutrients and everything like that. So it's all about keeping it really simple. If you are eating this meal after your workout, you can add some kind of carbohydrate into it as long as it's controlled and you don't do a ton of it. Okay, maybe a little bit of white rice or a little bit of a rice cake or something like that just to get you a little bit of an insulin spike to kick you out of that workout phase and launch you into your eating period. Okay, but the big goal here is how do we take care of the hormones? And I think we've covered a good role of that, right? We wanna make sure that we train in the morning, we want to make sure that we pay attention to the timing in which we are fasting, the supplements that we are taking, and we continue to, of course, keep your calories where you need them. That's probably the end thing that I need to say here. Do not dramatically reduce your calories because that is the worst thing you could do for your overall libido and for your hormones. Okay, on your fasting days, let those be the anomaly caloric restrictive days. On your non-fasting days, bring your calories up a little bit. Look at your calories over a seven-day revolving period and you should be in a slight deficit over the course of seven days. Stop looking at it day over day, you will drive yourself nuts, especially if you're fasting, because you have one day 1,000, one day 3,000, one day 1,200, one, you're gonna drive yourself nuts. Look at it over the course of a week. How many calories do you burn in the day? Multiply that by seven to see how many calories you burn in a week, and then maybe put yourself in a one or 2,000 calorie deficit for the total week, not each day. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow, and don't forget to check out Thrive Market. See you later.